is some manner of dating sim. I believe it's chess themed. But I don't know. I don't think there's any nudity, judging by the Steam page. I took a look, don't worry. This was a Kefka one. Please tell us the name and the name of your butler. My name is Uzorn. My butler's name is Syke. Yes. Please know that the story was made in Ren Pi, the visual novel engine, with music composed by Christopher Escalante and voiceover by Brad Gareth, Hayden Dandel, and Jonah Scott. We hope you enjoy this short story. Life's not fair, is it? I'm not sure what you mean, ma'am. It just isn't. I have riches, and power, and practically everything I could possibly want. But I don't at the same time. Ah, you're getting meta... meta... You're being silly, ma'am. This was my life. Whether I liked it or not, I was an heiress to a rich family. Whether I liked it or not, I had billions of dollars. What a tortured fucking life. I got... Splendid, no? To many women, this would have been a dream come true. The perfect way to spend life. That's a misuse of a semicolon. However, it wasn't as loving as one would think. Sophie, I'm being serious. Of course you are. Of course you are. I'm not saying you aren't. You said I was being silly. But I never said not serious, ma'am, did I? Fuck you, Sophie. You, you... Aha! See, ma'am, I know you're serious. You're just being silly. Because it's no fun being a rich chess piece girl. There you go again. Sophie was my personal maid, and despite her jokes, she was one of my best friends. She has been with me ever since I was a child, and has cared for me like a sister ever since. Sophie has gotten me out of trouble so many times. Even when I was at fault, it's a surprise that she deals with me. Now, oh, now, ma'am, don't get fussy. I was only fooling. Well, all right, I hate this job right now. I hope that we leave real soon. Huh, I'm still right, you know. Life isn't fair. Life is never fair, ma'am. It gives you lemons when you want to make orange juice. That's how the saying goes, right? Aha, servant lady, you fool! <laughs> it's when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, Sophie. But what if I want orange juice? You shut the fuck up, Sophie. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. It's not fair! Oh, ma'am, you're not talking about him again, are you? Uh, what? Psych, my personal butler. Psych was tr- oh, what the hell? I was expecting the butler to be the shitty one, not the maid. Fuck you. Yes, charming, handsome, sophisticated, and sweet. All things we always say about Mr. Eyeball. Despite him always being within arm's reach, he was as far away as could be. He was devoted to being the perfect servant. You if that meant disobeying any romantic request. I let out a sigh and looked to Sophie helplessly. I'm hungry, Sophie. Oh no, ma'am, those puppy eyes won't work on me. I already got you an extra tray of biscuit cookies for your morning tea. A biscuit cookies for your morning tea? How many more English stereotypes can we get into this sense, you may ask? Well, we got a little time to work on it. <laughs> but so ah, 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 ah. None of that now. No whining. Sorry. Ah, fine. I'll make you some fruit sandwiches and tea. Fuck you, Rurus. I'm playing this to completion. Yay, thank you. Honestly, I spoil you. 
Biscuit cookies. Y'all know. Biscuit cookies. Your favorite. <laughs> you love me. Yes, yes, ma'am, I love you. I'll be right back. Sophie left me alone in my room. Giving me time to think about cycle, I sat on my study desk. He was barely three years older than I was, yet he acted like a proper gentleman. The way he smiled practically laid my legs weak. His voice made my heart sing in long, blissful areas of affection. You do these areas of affection again. I was in love with my butler and I didn't care! The only problem was that he couldn't love me back. Psych was so invested in becoming the perfect servant that he denied any romantic gesture I threw his way. The mere thought of the last failure made me slump in my chair. Life's not fair. Suddenly, a knock! I'm brooding! Leave me be! Or, who is it? Your butler, miss. May I come in? My heart stopped. It was him. Psych! I felt pure elation bubble in my chest. Come in, please! Yeah, that looks like Sykes. The door opened to reveal Sykes, standing at full attention for me with a tray covered in letters in his hand. He took a step into the room, closed the door behind him, and walked to the front of my desk. My deepest apologies for the interruption, my lady, but I have some letters my addressed to me. My deepest apologies as quick as I received them. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you! Sykes gently placed the tray on my desk in front of me, revealing three letters. One had my family seal, one was pink and practically reeked of flowers, and the last letter was a plain envelope. Uh, the pink one. I held my breath and opened the letter with my letter opener, taking out the letter parchment and reading the contents of the letter, no I mean the note. My dear Oozworm, my name is Isaac Newport. I know that you do not know... I know that you do not know me, but I hope to know more about you soon. I am, I am currently in town this weekend, and would like to request your presence for tea. Please write back soon, Isaac. Another damn suitor! Uh. A suitor? I am afraid I'm unfamiliar with the Newport family. Did I care? I wasn't interested in courting, especially with a man I didn't know. Besides, the man I wanted to court was in the room with me, and that had already proved to be a difficult challenge, as is. I sighed and placed my hands on the middle of the note, ready to tear it in two! Oh, <laughs> I stopped. Miss, I would suggest holding on to that note. Huh? Why? I'm gonna turn him down. Still, if you were to visit, you'll have proof and knowledge of who he is rather than forget in the future. I sighed and placed the note in one of my drawers to obviously be forgotten about later. Plainly. I carefully opened the letter with my letter opener and took out the letter parchment. It was surprisingly pure letter white despite being in a concealed letter envelope. I read the letter's parchment's contents aloud. The lady exits the pumpkin carriage queen to Bishop K. K? What kind of joke was this? Who was K? What was this potassium getting at? What? Oh, I. It. It. Should, what? Eh. Save. Okay, why are there this many fucking save states? Why are you allowing me this many save slots? Are there just infinite save slots? Can you literally just fucking... This game is so hard, you need this many saves. Like, it's so, it's impossible. Save it every frame. We're up to 400 saves. Like, this is, okay, whatever. A riddle, perhaps? A riddle, perhaps? A riddle for what? Riddle for what? Da 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 oh, This must be a mistake. Who said this? 
Yeah, fuck it. Konami's looking at this game and like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I looked to the envelope for any indication in the center. The only thing on the envelope, besides for my address and name, was a giant K wax seal on the corner. Odd. I opened the letter gently with my letter opener, taking out the letter parchment and reading its contents. Dear Oosworth, I will be returning home today for my business trip. Please make sure to clean yourself and dress properly for my arrival. We have much to discuss. Your mother! Her mother is returning. That's wonderful news. I disagree. My mother had been on a long business trip that lasted almost two weeks. Most likely she would be staying for a couple days. Then she would be off to another business trip that needed her attention. This was the norm with my mother, being that she single-handedly owned the estate. I had to admit, it was lonely without her. However, when she was around, it was stressful. <laughs> the K stands for joke, my man. She demanded perfection out of me beyond anything, hoping that I eventually... Hoping that eventually I would become a perfect and proper young woman. I had just turned 17. She was perfect when she turned the age of 13. Okay, so I'm 17. That's, that's terrible. I apparently have a long way to go. Yes, wonderful. My mother's returning. Another damn suitor. This letter room really makes absolutely no sense. It's starting out marvelously. Is there anything I could do to make you happy, my lady? Hey, well, thank you. I think if you wanted to, uh... If you wanted to have a good time, then you know, you know, it's a little bit of wild sex. It's, uh, well, I mean, uh, please kiss me. Fuck it. No, thank you. I stood and walked around my desk, wanting some fresh air. Tell Sophie that. Whoa! Uh. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, whoa, what's this? <laughs> <I'm> gone. <laughs> oh, no, some anime bullshit has occurred. Oh, no. Uh, whoa, what's this? My lady, are you all right? <laughs> Voice actor for Psych is the worst. <laughs> I am now. <laughs> we didn't get to fuck the colonel in the KFC game. Why is this in fucking... I stared up at Psyche, who surprisingly didn't move. I enjoyed this sight a bit too much. How I wished he was open to my affection. However, he continued to stare at concern for my <laughs> I was just fine, especially with him over me. <laughs> the door opened again, forcing Psyche and me to look towards him in shock. Ma'am, I brought you... Oh, oh my. Oh my. This isn't what it looks like. I blushed a deep red. To have him on top of me was one thing. To have Sophie see it was even sexier. <laughs> yeah, God, fucking the aloes aren't all right. <laughs> Sight quickly stood up and helped me out, gently brushing it both of us off. As Sophie bit her lip with a grin. No worries, ma'am. I didn't say anything, I swear. <laughs> I glared at Sophie, knowing she was stifling laughter. I looked to Psyche after Psyche. I was shocked to see him blushing as much as I was. I stared as he closed his eyes and tried to take deep breaths. Was he... flustered? <laughs> I looked to Sophie, who looked ready to explode into laughter while holding my sandwiches and tea. Well, if you both will excuse me, I need to prepare lunch for Lady Beaumont's arrival. I'm I see in the middle of a contrived misunderstanding. Psych bowed to me quickly before exiting the room, closing the door behind him. <laughs> uh, that's the 
sound of his footsteps disappeared. Sophie burst into laughter. <laughs> what all had happened while I was away? Were you trying to seduce him again, ma'am? <laughs> <laughs> what? Sophie! That was hilarious, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I glare. I glare at her once again. Make her stop and bring her laughter into a soft trouble. Wait, 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 wait. So, ma'am, I brought some sweet sandwiches and tea for you. Strawberries with a fresh hazelnut spread. That sounds terrible. Oh wow! That, I mean, oh wow! Thank you. My pleasure, ma'am. I sat back down at my desk and watched Sophie place down the plate of tea sandwiches and tea in front of me over the tray of the second row. Any fancy mail today, ma'am? I received the strangest letter today. Oh? What's up, ma'am? It's like a riddle of some sort. The lady exits the pumpkin carriage. A pumpkin carriage? Like in that Cinderella fairy tale? I assume so. Then it says Queen to Bishop. First fairy tales, now chess? What is this loony thinking? I shook my head, unsure of how to answer. I didn't know myself. The letter was indeed odd, and if Sophie and Sight could figure it out, there was no way I was going to. Yes, those two fucking brain geniuses. But that doesn't make a lick of sense if you ask me. Are you sure it wasn't a wrong address? I took out the envelope to check once again. It didn't magically change and was still addressed to me. No, it was indeed addressed to me. Hmm, that's very strange, ma'am. Anything else? Well, my mother's coming home today. So I heard! The kitchen hands are going crazy at the news! Crazy! They already know. Of course! Abby practically memorizes your mother's schedules, that strange kitchen woman. That is true. Anything else? I have a new suitor! Ooh, a new suitor! Ooh. What's his name? What's his name? Isaac Newport. Newport? Has a Newport Law Affairs? You heard of Newport? You're damn right I have. They're a new lawyer family coming up from out of nowhere. Oh shit, Sophie said a swear. Only the peasantry like me know about them, though. They specialize in helping poor families with houses and such. Is that so? That was very interesting. The Newport family was a new family to look forward to gossip about a privacy defense. Hopefully there would be enough talk about them to ignore me. I wasn't a fan of the parties the rich families around me hosted. Anything else? No. I sighed and enjoyed my snack. The tea was almost perfect and the sandwiches were very sweet. But I appreciated Sophie's work. Despite it being a menial task, she did it with love. Yeah, she's a maid. That's kind of what they fucking do. Like, it's... So, ma'am, what are you going to wear for your mother when she arrives? Nothing. I sat in silence for a moment, contemplating on what to wear. I had many outfits, but I wasn't about to put on a vest. <laughs> you just went for my mom. Just fucking... Oh, I'm so rich! What do I do with my life? Stopping my snack, I looked to Sophie and thought, What dresses do you suggest? Well, you can always wear the white one your mother bought from France. Then there's also the red one from Spain. That one looks good on you. Red or white, it was a simple choice. But I almost felt like laughing at the choice itself. Something about it was hilarious to me, and I couldn't put my finger on why. Finally, I made up my mind and said, Oh, we have a choice. Oh boy. Ugh. Jack, red or white? Chat, right away. <laughs> I'm not setting up a poll. Fuck you, right away. <laughs> okay. Well, 
Everyone except for Max and Josh just said white, so okay, there we Ooh, go. Ooh, lovely choice, man. Ooh. Are you sure about the white one? <laughs> just in case you had to second guess yourself. In this very important video game. Sophie nodded and got out my white dress from the closet. Let's get you cleaned up, ma'am. Then we'll get this dress on you. But in chess, red doesn't go at all. There's no red pieces in chess. It's fucking checkers. Getting into dresses was a tiring process. First I had to clean, using an unnecessarily large bath to wash in. Then I had to be dried, which required both me and Sophie to do it in a reasonable amount of time. After that, I had to powder and put on my underclothes, which included a corset. Sophie, you're trying to kill me! Just a little more, ma'am. Your mother would kill us both if we don't do this right! Uh, of course it's worth it. You're right, checkers is red versus black. Okay, so no. The, what, no, chess doesn't do red, it's always black. What fucking shitty chess board does red? Then we finally got to put the dress on. It was easy to slip on and it only took Sophie a minute to tie it up fit perfectly. Oh, I got an achievement apparently. That's it. I stood in front of my large vanity mirror. Wow, I look terrible. Checking out my dress. I smiled at my choice. It was a lovely dress with lace and ribbons. I dared to think I looked like an angel. <laughs> Sophie quickly found a white ribbon and tied it to my hair. You look so lovely, ma'am. I'm jealous. Thank you, Sophie. You're the best. Sophie smiled and bowed to me graciously. I turned back to the mirror and stared at myself a little longer, wondering what Psych would think of it. It wasn't sexy, but it was still elegant and mature. The sound of horses made me quickly look away from the mirror to look at my window. I rushed over and looked out to see a large carriage stopping in front of the house. Who is that? I don't recognize the carriage. I don't either. I stared at the carriage a while longer, unable to tear my eyes away. Who was visiting us in today of all days? It was Kentucky Fried Chicken Man, Colonel Sandrill. The door of the carriage opened, and out stepped a handsome man, looking to be around my age. He was dressed in a casual suit with brushed hair and an anxious smile. As per his protocol, step, uh, Sykes stepped out of the mansion and greeted him. They spoke to each other briefly before Sykes escorted him inside. What did this man want? Ah, uh, ma'am, could it be the new pot son who sent you that letter? Oh, my God! Oh, uh, Isaac, why would it be him? Why would he even come? He's come to court you? Oh, my, this is exciting! I quickly looked back to the carriage, trying to piece that logic together. He did wish to meet with me, but why come to my house? It's a fucking mystery. Was he that desperate? I sighed and exited my room with Sophie close behind. I felt the obligation to greet him creep into my gut, so I followed it all the way to the main lobby. I stepped into the lobby to see the man in sight conversing to one another. At the sound of my footsteps, however, they stopped and looked at me. Okay, look, but if they were going to do the red chess piece thing here, why are all the pictures of black chess pieces? Sykes seemed surprised at my outfit. Did he like it? I looked at him and gently tilted my head in his in, er, in confusion. <clears throat> Sykes quickly shook his head. <laughs> <laughs> Sophie said another guy. Mr. Newport, may I introduce the current lady of the house, Miss Beaumont. Your hat's stupid. As I was introduced, I climbed down the stairs of the grand staircase. I reached the bottom and walked over to where the two men were awaiting me with to Sophie two steps behind. Oh, wow. <laughs> Allow me to say you look absolutely stunning, Miss Beaumont. Fuck you, Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Newport. I presume according to my butler? Yes, Isaac Newport. It's a pleasure to finally meet you at last. He held out a hand, wanting me to place mine in it. Did I want to? My mother wasn't around, so I didn't necessarily have to be polite to that extent. I nod. Thank you. 
I want to fuck Psych, not you. Get out of here. Isaac stared for a second before smiling gently and pulling his hand away from me politely. Might I ask why you're here? Oh, well, I was in town and I was passing by your estate, so I decided to come by and possibly meet you. Obviously, it was a good choice. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking hot. That's... I see. Well, I'm afraid I usually deal with scheduled meetings, and I'm not sure I can entertain you. Oh, no, I, I wasn't insinuating anything of the sort. I, I merely wished to stop by and meet you, that's all. Ah, I understand. Well, since you did stop by, allow me to offer you some tea. I looked over back over my shoulder at Sophie, who quickly nodded and stepped forward ahead of me towards Isaac. Would you follow me to the drawing room, please? I'll prepare some tea and bring it as soon as it's ready. Thank you so much. Alright, now time to fuck Sai. <laughs> I bit my tongue. Sophie was definitely a great actress around guests. <laughs> what? Sophie and Isaac walked away towards the drawing room, leaving Psyche and me alone. I let out a sigh. Is something troubling you, my lady? I want to put bone is. No, I'm just surprised, is all. Psyche nodded, standing at the ready for any instruction I had. I looked in the direction of the drawing room and bit my lip. I didn't want to sit in there with him, especially if my mother was coming home today. Yeah, this guy's not rich at all. What the fuck? <laughs> Yes, I was just fucking choking himself. <laughs> Who knows what she would think. Um, my lady, if I may speak my mind. Sure. I turned to look at Psyche. Oh, go ahead. You look absolutely stunning in that dress. I, I, I don't. Uh, like I, I can, I can see myself here. It's, I stared, suddenly turning red in his face at the compliment. He thought I looked stunning. I looked at the ground, unable to reply back. Sight cleared his throat and stood back in attention, awaiting for me to give either, or awaiting for me to either give him orders or leave. Just my luck, however. I turned my head toward the front door, hearing another set of horses. Sight, please check who has arrived. Yes, my lady. Sight quickly walked over and opened the door to see outside. Your mother has returned. Shocking. I felt my heart stop. Was my luck just terrible today? Sight so quickly exited the front doors to assist my mother out of her carriage. I stood, knowing that my mother would want me to be at the lobby waiting for her. I felt frozen, unsure of how to explain the second carriage to my mother, who was very quickly on her way inside. It was a suitor, but I didn't want her to get the wrong idea, because I'm about to fuck Sight. Oh, oh, I'm on. Oh, oh, um. At last, my mother stepped into the lobby with Sight carrying her bags almost effortlessly behind her. Ah, there you are. Punctual as expected. My mother quickly stepped to me and looked me up and down. I waited to see how she would respond. I wore white instead of red. Surely she would be happy! No mistakes or loose flaps of cloth. Good. I smiled at my mother. I did appreciate when I made her proud enough not to lecture me. Now, can you explain to me why there's another carriage in the front? I was fucking the horses. Oh. Save slot 399. I had to be calm. She had to understand that I was not interested in a suitor, nor did I invite him. Isaac Newport wanted to visit today, Mother. He was in town and decided to stop by. And where is he? In the drawing room, Mother. I have no time for guests. I have much to do, and I won't have you I entertaining have no guests without me. Fuck him. My mother turned her head to Psyche. Escort him out. Yes, madam. Psyche gently placed my mother's luggage down, away from the door, and quickly left for the drawing room. Now, have you been keeping up with your studies? A E I O U. Yes, mother. Have you been practicing the piano? Uh, A E. Yes, mother. Perfecting your handwriting. Hey, you, yeah. Good. Then we can discuss. As she was about to finish her statement, Isaac and Psyche entered the lobby, walking towards the exit. Isaac stopped and bowed to my mother. Oh, hello, Lady Beaumont. It is a pleasure to meet you. It is a pleasure to meet you too, Mr. Newport. I'm afraid we have some business to attend to, so we cannot entertain you today. Feel free to stop by tomorrow. I understand perfectly, ma'am. Please, have a good day. Isaac bowed to my mother before smiling at me. 
and a good day to you too, Miss Beaumont. With that, he left and exited the mansion, with Sight closing the door. Mr. Newport, you say? Yes, ma'am. He looked to be your age. Was he a suitor? Fucking You're psych. lying to me. Fuck you, Mom. <laughs> I wish she knew enough to look through my lies. It was unbelievable that she could see through my elaborate web of fucking fibs. Mother clicked her tongue and obvious <laughs> For walking past me towards the drawing room. I sighed and followed suit. We entered the drawing room, where Sophie was cleaning the tea, as it was previously had. Leave the tea. Bring new cups. Yes, madame. Sophie quickly left the room with a used cup Isaac had, leaving me and my mother alone. My mother sat down, waiting for me to sit across from her in the empty seat. I quickly obeyed her silent command to do so, looking to her and sitting up as properly as I could. How old are you now? Uh, is this a trick question? Seventeen. Seventeen and still unmarried. Up. What am I to do with you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna fuck the mom. <laughs> that's the that's the good end. That's <laughs> I bit my tongue. I knew better than to speak that to my mother when she talked like that. She had been hoping one day I would marry, but it was becoming futile. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Chats are uh, question mark. Mm. <laughs> Gosh, mom, you have to marry me to the butler, so I don't know. It's, it's fucked up, isn't it? That's... Anyways, I will be staying here for a couple of days <laughs> to deal with some in town business. I expect you to entertain Mr. Newport properly should he return. This goes for any suitor, understand? Yeah, brother. The dinner schedules will be upheld as I am here. If you are not at dinner during the scheduled time, you will not eat. Understand? <laughs> good. My mother was strict, but for good reason. She wanted me to be a perfect lady, suitable for marriage and upholding a family. If I was a toe out of line, I would be lectured until I regretted ever disobeying. We drank tea, barely speaking to each other, before I was dismissed back to my room. I quickly stood, bowed, and left. Sophie followed behind, two steps away from me. As I entered my room, I slumped and let out a tired sigh. So mother's here. Wonderful. Oh, come now, ma'am. You should be happy. You should be happy. I walked to my bed and sat down, feeling exhaustion take over my body like a gust of wind. What? what kind of fucking, fucking simile is that? Exhaustion take over my body like a gust of wind. Wanna run that one by me again? You wanna you wanna give me some uh <laughs> You wanna tell me how that makes any fucking sense at all? My lady, Mr. Game, Miss Game, whatever you fuck I thought of the suitor, whatever. He was polite, but was he really? He seemed young and bright, and it seemed like a good idea to try and be with him. It would indeed make my mother happy. Come on, Sam, as you should be happy. It's a living. It's a living! On the other hand, I still liked Psyche. He kept me enthralled in his spell, and I didn't know how to proceed with him. Mother would never approve, but I couldn't deny my feelings so easily. It was kind of purple ass prose. <laughs> I looked to my window. Life's not fair, is it? You keep saying that, miss. If you keep looking at it like that, you'll never get oranges. What? What? I know there's some Brits in the chat. Is that a Brit thing? You'll never get oranges. What the fuck does that fucking mean? Kill her. I'm fucking... Where's the knife option? All right, the orange juice thing. Fuck it. What can I do? My eyes traveled down, waiting to land in my lap. However, my gaze stopped at an envelope, stuck in the... Okay, I thought we were going to look at Sophie's tits or something. Oh, what's this? 
I stood and walked to the window, taking out the envelope and opening it. I took out the parchment and read it aloud. The girl puts on the red hood, bishop to king K. Again, another riddle. What was going on? A riddle? The glass slipper bit talks about Little Red Riding Hood, but the second part talks about chess again. Oh, what a mystery it fucking is! This makes no sense. Ooh, ooh, maybe it's a sign! Someone's telling you to, uh, um, well, uh... To fuck's sake. <laughs> I don't think so, Sophie. <laughs> Was I sure, though, this note and the last were connected somehow? I didn't want to blindly follow their messages. Well, that person can go fuck himself. I don't want to play chess with anyone. I want to play this dating sim. I guess I'll just wait for another one. If another one appears, I'll try and sort this out. Something in my gut was telling me that these messages were meant to tell me what to do. Were they about Isaac? Ooh, ooh, maybe it's a oh, sign. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Okay, that... Apparently, if you hit your scroll wheel, it goes back... Uh, messages. Which I guess is a smart move, but what the hell. Or were they about psych? I felt tired just thinking about it. My rage is short! Uh, I gently fell back onto my bed. Uncaring if my dress was still on and let my eyes close naturally. Ma'am, shouldn't you? Shh. No words. Only chess. Okay, ma'am. Have a good rest. They're gone! <laughs> I listened... <laughs> I listened to Sophie left the room, leaving me alone. I kept my eyes shut, letting my exhaustion take hold of me, bring me to the world of sleep. I didn't mind that the course of binding me limited my breath. I felt at peace, resting in my bed. Oh, we're going to die in our sleep, aren't we? That's good. I didn't even open my eyes till hours later when the sun was down. Mm, none? No, it's just three ends. I sat up, wincing at the squeeze my course ahead. But yeah, fucking no shit. I looked around and realized that now that the stars and night sky were out, I had missed dinner. Well. I missed eating. What am I going to do? As I asked myself that question, I looked at my desk where a plate covered with small tray cover sat. I stood and walked over, opening it to reveal a plate of food. Sophie, I have to thank her when she returns. I smiled and was about to sit to eat, but something in the window caught my eye. I walked over and peered out the window to see Syke walking around the house away from my window. Syke? It was odd for him to be outside this late, let alone at all. He never really went outside unless someone needed to be escorted in. Why was he outside now? I quickly rushed to my dresser. But before I touched the knob, I stopped and stared at my hand. Was this a good... Oh, I thought it was going to be like covered in blood or something. Was this a good idea? Sneaking out late at night to see what my butler was doing? I bit my lip. Remembering the note I had received before I fell asleep. The girl puts on the red hood. Fucking man. Is this what the note was talking about? No. That's. It was silly to believe. But it was almost frightening how accurate it was to the situation I was about to go into. What? <laughs> Scobie, I know there are multiple endings. I saw the achievements before we. So, I, yeah. Should I follow? Yes. I nodded to myself. I want to know. I took the knob and opened the dresser, oh, taking out my night shawl and covering my shoulders with it. I closed the door and quickly snuck out of the room. It was quiet in the house, which both irked me and made me feel relieved. As long as I remained quiet, I'd not be found. I quickly tiptoed my way to the front, opened the door, and snuck out the direction towards Psychoid Lane. Oh, we're at the old well. Okay, that's good. The gravel, the gravel underneath my shoes cracked and shuffled, making me wince with each step. What the fuck kind of fucking shoes do you have? Why is it... 
Yes, Max Ford. For, that's, 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 uh, I didn't want him to find out that I was following him and watching. No, it's a shawl. You know, it's the same thing as a hood, except like with it's a hood, but with a twist. I didn't. My succeed. lady. Huh. <laughs> Who's warm? <laughs> I froze, staring at the corner. I was about to turn. How did you know it was me? I know it's you. Come on out. Oh, Psych's gonna murder me. Psych was a serial killer the entire time. I peeked around the corner to see him carrying a lantern and staring in my direction. How did you know it wasn't me? I can recognize your perfume and powder, my lady. It's moderately fucked up. Oh, right. There was no use in sneaking. I quickly walked over to him and looked up at his dimly lit face, unsure of what to say now that I was caught. My lady, you shouldn't be out this late. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just woke up and- There's no excuse, my lady. Come, we must get you back inside. I couldn't even fight back. I was quickly taken back to my room without question. Wow, what a useful side quest we just did. Fuck's sake. That next morning, I was dressed by Sophie and brought before Isaac. To my surprise, my mother had arranged a marriage between him and me. What? What? Wait. Hold the, hold the phone. What? Bad end? What? I just... Sykes... <laughs> the side watch has been... Hold on, hold on, wait a minute, what? Like... Sure, surely, surely I picked some options that didn't lead to this. I had to say yes, my mother's eyes forced me to say yes. At last, my mother received the marriage for me that she wanted. I was finally going to become a woman. <laughs> hey, I just met you, and this is crazy, but you're a rich boy, so win me, baby. I looked to Psych, knowing that my romantic advances would no longer happen now that I was to be a wife. Don't get me wrong, Isaac was a good man. He just didn't give me that urgency to pursue his love. Our marriage was a business arrangement, one my mother perfected and designed. My life was full of lemons, ready for lemonade, but they're too bland to sell. That's not what... Who has ever heard of a fucking bland lemon? Like, what... Ending. The lady locks the girl in her tower. Queen takes bishop. What? 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 I have questions! What? What? I fucking 